Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. There, welcome back. This is for uh, chapter one of Micah. So we're going to begin the new book here of Micah. I'm going to read a little explanation about the book of Micah so we can understand better what's going on here and about Micah himself. Sidney B. Sperry explained, since Micah was a contemporary of Isaiah, Hosea, and Amos, the problems he faced were much the same as theirs. Micah was not a statesman like Isaiah. Consequently, he was not so much concerned about his nation's political sins. The prophet was more like Amos in that his grievances were social in character. He was especially concerned with the attempts of the nobles to build up large estates by ejecting small property owners. Corrupt judges assisted their greedy friends in robbing the weak. Widows and orphans without means of defense were deprived of their goods by force and oftentimes sold into slavery. The common people were kept in bondage through high taxation, and creditors were unmerciful on their victims. Micah held the nobility to be responsible for the terrible moral and social corruption among his people. He likened the nobles to cannibals who eat the flesh of the people and chop their bones in pieces for the pot. There was no end to their greed and rapacity, and decisions were given to those who paid the largest bribes. From the superscription of the book of Micah, it is apparent that the prophet's ministry, as during reigns of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, his preaching, therefore, took place during the years from approximately 740 B.C. to 697 B.C. We may assign to him an approximate date of 725 B.C. This date reveals Micah as a contemporary of the great Isaiah and possibly also of Hosea and Amos. The name Micah is an abbreviation for Micaiah, 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 as the prophet is called in Jeremiah 26, 18, which in turn is probably a, contra- a contraction of Micaiah, which is likened to, who is likened to Jehovah. The prophet is to be distinguished from the elder prophet Micah, the son of Imlah in 1 Kings, as well as from 10 other persons of the same name in the Old Testament. The fact that Micah is called the Morish, Morishtite, would point strongly to his being a native of Morish, Morisheth Gath, which is mentioned in the text. The name of the town means territory or property of Gath and seems to have been located in the Shephala, or low hill region of Judea, some 20 miles southwest of Jerusalem. If our location of Morisheth is correct, it commands a marvelous view of the surrounding country and anciently must have been of considerable importance. Micah was therefore a product of the open hills and valleys and seems to have had no special love for the cities. Contemporary with Isaiah, Joel, Amos, and Hosea, his messages are about Samaria and Jerusalem, the captivity of both kingdoms, their ultimate restoration, and the coming of the Messiah. Chapters 1 to 3 are very negative and harsh, saying Israel has has broken her covenants, and chapters 4 through 7 are more positive messages of the Lord's future remembrance of the covenant, which results in him protecting and saving Israel. Micah prophesies the downfall of Samaria and Jerusalem. Verse 1, the word of the Lord that came to Micah the Morishtite, in the days of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. Hear all ye people, hearken, O earth, and all that therein is, and let the Lord God be witness against you, the Lord from his holy temple. For behold, the Lord cometh forth out of his place, and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth, and the mountains shall be molten under him. That sounds like second coming, doesn't it? And the valleys shall be cleft as wax before the fire, and as the waters that are poured down a steep place. For the transgression of Jacob is all this, and for the sins of the house of Israel, what is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? Therefore I will make Samaria as an heap of the field and as the plantings of a vineyard, and I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley, and I will discover or lay bare the foundations thereof, and all the graven images thereof shall be beaten to pieces, and all the hires thereof shall be burned with the fire. And all the idols thereof will I lay desolate, For she gathered it of the hire of a harlot, and they shall return to the hire of a harlot. Therefore I will wait and howl, I will go stripped and naked, I will wake a wailing, I will make a wailing like the dragons in mourning of the owls. For her wound is incurable, for it is coming unto Judah, 
He has come into, unto the gate of my people, even to Jerusalem. Declare ye it not at Gath, weep ye not at all in the house of Arf, Ar, Ephra, i.e. dust or ashes. Each of the cities named in verses 10 to 16 will meet a fate appropriate to the meaning of its name. Roll thyself in the dust. Micah used wordplay to pronounce an indictment against Judah. The technique is readily apparent in the Hebrew and can be appreciated in this more literal translation of Micah. Weep tears at Teardown or Bochim, grovel in the dust at Dust Town, Beth Afra, fair forth stripped, O fair town, Safir, Stir Town, Zanan, dare not stir, Beth Esel, and Maroth, hopes in vain, for doom descends from the eternal to the very gates of Jerusalem, to horse and drive away, O horse town, Lachish, O source of Sion's sin, where the crimes of Israel center, O maiden Sion, you must part with Morasheth, Morasheth of Gath, and Israel's kings are ever balked at Bokhtan, or Bokhtan, as uh, that's Exib. Anyway, that's from a new translation of the Bible. Verse 11, Pass ye away, thou inhabitant of Saphir, having this, thy, same, thy shame naked, the inhabitant of Zanan, came not forth in the morning of Bethezel, he shall receive of you his standing. For the inhabitant of Moroth waited, waited carefully for good, but evil came down from the Lord unto the gate of Jerusalem. O thou inhabitant of Lachish, bind the chariot to the swift beast. She is the beginning of the sin of the daughter of Zion, for the transgressions of Israel were found in thee. Therefore shalt thou give presents to Moresh, Moresheth Gath, the houses of Akzib, shall be a lie to the kings of Israel. Yet I will bring an heir unto thee, O inhabitant of Marishah, he shall come unto Ad Adullam, the glory of Israel, make thee bald and pole, cut off thy hair. For thy delicate children, enlarge thy baldness as the eagle, for they are gone into captivity from thee. So that's the end of chapter 1 of Micah. So he's talking here about the destruction of various cities that will happen. Anyway, that's the end. We'll see you next time. Bye.